welcome to this week's Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm your host, Tim Apicella. This week, we once again look at the Honolulu Rail Project. The state legislature has recently announced they will be meeting in a special session in late August to come up with a funding plan that shores the $3 billion shortfall. Many outspoken critics of rail, Randy Roth, Cliff Slater, Panos Prepadoras, Scott Wilson, Dr. Keone Dudley, and others tried to warn Oahu residents that the rail project was off track from the very beginning. It's sad to say their predictions and their cries in the wilderness have been proven correct. Recently, a local journalist, Mark Coleman, wrote an excellent article for the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii website. This piece cited a vast collection of articles written by those critics and their dire warning stating, Houston, we have a problem. Mark Coleman's article clearly points to many critical points that should have been listened to but were ignored by Hart, the Mayor's Office, Honolulu City Council, Hawaii State Legislature, Federal Transit Administration, and even many residents. Everyone is listening now, but is it too late? Mark Coleman is a journalist for the Honolulu, was a journalist for the Honolulu Star Advertiser for 27 years and Pacific Business News for 10 years. He continues his long journalistic career as a contract writer and editor. Mark, thank you very much for coming on the show. You're welcome. Thank much you appreciated. Much. Thank you for taking the time out and sharing your vast years of experience as a journalist and um, your That's recent article, which I thought was very well placed and very succinct and really hit on all the high points of, of um, where we are with the rail project and where we've been with the rail project. Thank you. Um, I love the title of your article, I got to tell you. I, <laughs> I, and the title was Honolulu Rail, Clearly a Fiasco. Uh -huh. And uh, you're a communication major. You uh, had your undergraduate and your master's in communication. You may remember a guy named Stuart D'Angelo um, who had this concept about denotation and connotation. And denotation is, you know, the exact meanings of the words and how people get hung up on definitions. And connotation is the, the, the emotional uh, response we elicit from words and things like that. So I, I look at that word fiasco, and I love it because um, <laughs> if you don't look at the exact meaning, it, generally people think there's, a, you know, there's something wrong. There's an yeah. emotional connection to that word. It means something's up, something's amiss. Yes, So. Um, the definition was that it's fiasco means a thing that is complete failure, especially in a ludicrous or humiliating way. And you, you picked the right word. <laughs> yeah, I was going for brevity for one thing, and that, that word jumped out at me. Yeah. So words are important, but uh, when it comes to describing our, our real project and where it started and... At this point, it's pretty much a fiasco. I think everybody yeah. agrees, even supporters clearly are nervous about the whole thing. Um, true believers are going to go down with the rail, so to speak, you know, if, if it comes to that, they'll, they'll never change their minds. But even a lot of people who support rail at this point uh, are starting to think that perhaps it needs a close look at what's really going on. Um, there is the issue of do you continue it or stop it at Middle Street? or just stop it all together like they did with the big dig yeah. in New Jersey. And, uh, well, it's one thing to have, uh, you know, this thing almost daily, if not, if not daily, um, on the front page or the second page of the Star Advertiser. Yeah. It's another thing when the New York Times writes it up yeah. and calls it a boondoggle. Yeah. Now, the word it's boondoggle is an interesting word, too, yeah. and that came from Panos Provadoras because he was interviewed in the New York Times. But, oh. the, but the bottom line is, uh -huh. It's an embarrassment now, and it's almost a worldwide embarrassment. This project is the highest, greatest cost per capita in any projects at it's any unreal. time. It's unreal to to be here on this small island of Oahu with barely a million people, if that, and to have to pay for this huge, gigantic, mega project. It's basically a mega yeah. project, and everyone knows that these things always cost more. But through the years, those who said that were always Oh, don't worry. We got this yeah. one under control. Well, it's it's almost like we have to be lied to in order to have a project approved. Um, it makes you wonder if they if they really meant to be lying or if they were, you know, just hoping for the best. Uh, I, you you got to. I try not to look at the motives too much. There's always talk about 
that they that the, that that there's some intentional criminality yeah. <laughs> or fraud. Well, we'll talk about that. But I, I have no, yeah. you know, I, at the moment there's no proof of any of that, right. and uh, there are some people who are convinced that there is, and and that's why I personally would like to see a forensic audit. Yeah, we've had some other audits. Yeah, we'll talk about that too. Okay. Um, I quoted this. Uh, I have had a quote, and I've mentioned it many times on this show, by the ex-mayor of San Francisco, Willie Brown. Oh. And as you know, he was oh, a yeah. very good mayor in San Francisco, and he, he left being mayor, and he, he got his own article in the San Francisco Chronicle. So on July 28th, uh, 2013, he basically, and I'm going to paraphrase because I don't have the exact quote here, but he basically said, um, when it comes to big projects, um, if people really knew the true cost true cost of what that project was going to be, they would never vote for it. He mm -hmm. said, um, mm -hmm. in addition to that, he said, the only thing you can do is get on it right away and dig a hole so big mm -hmm. that there's no alternative to that, that big hole than to just fill it in with more money. That's pretty much what they did here. That's what they've done they here. They rushed it into production, so to speak, you know, before all the ducks were lined up, hence those uh, at least one or two of those lawsuits, hence the first lawsuit for sure the, mm -hmm. about the EV and uh, the second one was a different issue as I recall but yeah um, so I mean they, they kind of knew that yeah, I, people weren't going to swallow a 10 billion yeah. dollar price tag and even now they're saying don't worry once we're done you'll love it and, uh, Try it, you'll like it. <laughs> now, we don't know what's in the bill, but you know, once it's there, you're going to love it. And, well, uh, they've been saying that for a long time. They have, and you know, I, that that thing about being a boondog. I mean, Panos might have said it in that New York Times article, but the the concept has been around forever, including including back in 1981 when I wrote this story for Pacific Business News. Robert Poole uh -huh. from the Reason Foundation. He's a national transportation expert. Uh, in aviation, but also rail and issues like that as well. And he was speaking here in uh, August 1981, and the headline of this article was called "Heart Called Giant White Elephant." That, this was pr this was in the Eileen Anderson days before the current heart. Right. You know, and he was saying that uh, it was going to be a gigantic white elephant if they went ahead with it. And this is just a fascinating article, written. 1981, mm -hmm. 91, 2001, 2011, you know, almost yeah. 40 years ago. Well, in reporting, you know, um, I'm sure, you know, things were a lot easier because you probably had access to a public officials a lot easier. Um, Panos Prevodoros basically said, you know, when the rail was up for vote back in 1992, all the critics about rail, tr you know, had an opportunity to sit down with public officials, with the rail officials, and, and, and basically lay out their case saying why this wasn't the best of ideas. He said, but this time around, they hired all these, you know, professional public relation firms, and the, you know, those in charge basically created a big wall around them so that you couldn't get in and, and really get, you know, valid responses to their criticisms. Well, there are a lot more gatekeepers now, that's for sure. And as a, and, you know, as a, rep as a journalist, yeah. you, 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 you've seen this. You well, know. you know, I, I, I'm not, I, for the last few years of my journalism career at the Star Advertiser, I did a lot of interviewing of, of uh, of uh, people, name in the news kind of folks, but I didn't do the kind of reporting that uh, would have familiarized myself with how difficult it might be um, on the ground for, for actual transportation reporters and such. But, you know, those are the guys, the guys who are doing that work, but I did get to see people like Kevin Dayton and Marcel Honoré and others at the Star Advertiser do, you know, they're doing a fantastic job and, and other publications, uh, Civil Beat, uh, and so on, but um, you know, for myself now as a contract writer and, and working with Grassroots Institute, yeah, I, some people don't return my calls, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm not having that much trouble. Um, I haven't tried to call everybody, right. you know. But um, I haven't never had to file an FOIA. I try to. I give people enough time to uh, make sure they really aren't calling me back. And, and I'll take it from there. But, right. but I, I can't really speak to that in terms of now versus then because I haven't been doing that kind of right. reporting lately. My article that you, you talked about that I had on the Grassroots Institute website, that was really working off uh, uh, a lot of what guys like Kevin and Marcel have done and many others. Um, it wasn't just critics of, of the rail right. that, that I was citing 
and, and in fact, the no, you had over 27 sources, and there was variety from A yeah, to Z. Yeah, you yeah. Had and a really great, you know, resource thank, list. Thank you. And I, um, you know, it was almost something I could write, and then I went back and found the sources. You know, that's how that's how easy it is to think about this project at this point. It's just all out there, and having tracked it since the 1980s, you know, the, the 1981. Um, I, I know that, that, that there was a, um, that this was all going to happen, you know, and, and, and why, you know, you feel like a voice in the wilderness. Uh, That's what I put in the introduction. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And now it's like they're just trying to put lipstick on a pig, uh, you know, and there are a lot of economic reasons to ditch the thing even now. Right. I'm not saying you should. Personally, I, I'm, I've never really been in favor of it. Uh, I think there were a lot of other better ways to, to handle the issue of traffic congestion, um, which was the original reason for doing this. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I, I've been tracking this so long, I remember when Fosse, I remember when the original rail proposal was from Honolulu to, to Kailua. Right. You know, and then it, was, then it was variations of the theme going out to Kapolei area for the Eva crowd to get to Honolulu. Right. They were, I think they were even talking about at one time of going to Hawaii Kai. Yeah, they were. That was an, yeah. uh, a concept. Yeah. So, you know, it's like when those issues kind of, when those needs kind of faded, it's almost like they were looking for something. We've got to build a rail somewhere, you know? Yeah, there's federal dollars over there somewhere. Yeah. Boy, why don't we just try to get some of that? And I just wish <laughs> that they had not been in such a rush or fallen prey. Right. This is where, you know, you start to worry about about uh, crony capitalism and who benefits, you know, follow the money, is the benefit really going to be equal to the cost? Well, and at this point, I'm thinking that it's not. And I'm, and I'm a true believer that you don't throw good money after bad. Uh, the fallacy of sunken costs. It might be time to pull the plug on the thing. But first, I'd like to see a forensic audit, which, as you know, is different from a mere financial or performance audit in that in those kinds of audits and similar audits, the auditors basically go in assuming everybody's on the up and up, and they just want to make sure everything's going according to how the contracts are specified and that the financial statements really reflect, you know, that they're accurate, both for business and government. But a forensic audit is more looking into correspondence, going Emails. Deeper, deeper into the contracts to find out if there's any fraud, any criminality, any mm -hmm. violation of law. And I'm not saying there is, but now that, we're, now that we're three to four times over budget and only halfway there, with the hardest part looming ahead, you know, going into town. Yeah, but um, you know, Hart says, I, oh, that's the past. You know, why do we want to go in the past? Let's just move forward. Yeah. Doesn't that sound convenient? I mean, I really? Sure wish, um, I wonder if the Hart director who said that has had any second thoughts about that and if she would change her mind or reword her and then the other guy said, there was another guy on the board, too, who said, you know, kind of backed her up and said, they're all basically saying, well, we're new, let's start fresh, yeah. you know. But that was before us. Yeah, that was before <laughs> us. But, you know, also new on the board is, is yeah. Felix, uh, John Henry Felix, and he's the one who requested a forensic audit, which they actually approved of, and allocated $250, $250,000. Which? <laughs> To submit that in their budget for the city council to approve. Hold that thought for a minute. I'm sure. sorry to interrupt you, but we yeah. do have a commercial break. All right. I'm Tim Mappicello. I'm here with Mark Coleman, and this is Moving Hawaii Forward. We'll be right back. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, 25 talk shows by 25 dedicated hosts every week, helping us to explore and understand the issues and events in and affecting our state. Great content for Hawaii from ThinkTech. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your every day. So protect your every day. If you see something suspicious, Say something to local authorities. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. 
Aloha. Welcome back to Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm here with Mark Coleman, journalist for uh, many decades. And we're here before the commercial break talking about a, an audit of the heart rail system. Um, Mark, before I interrupted you, go ahead. Continue the, what you were saying about there was actually a, an approval for the forensic audit by heart. It, it, it seems so. It, it, the, the whole trans, Joe Kent, Vice President of Research for Grassroots Institute, Went back into the trans. Went back into the videotapes of the hearings at, of the Hart Board in November, uh, June, May, and so on. And he he caught he caught that he transcribed that uh, um, um, that exchange you were talking about. Mm -hmm. with, with, I think her name is Ember Shim, who was uh, the the woman on the board who was uh, saying, you know, let's don't muck around in the past and. Uh, and if I got her name wrong, I apologize. That's okay. I think I'm close. These things happen. Uh, anyway, th what they were t why they were even talking about it is because late last year, John Henry Felix had suggested, had recommended, in fact, this is uh, a letter from John, he, he had recommended that they do a forensic audit because the, the credibility of rail transit on Oahu had lost, vir the credibility for it had virtually disappeared. Nobody believes anything anymore about what public officials have to say about it. Yeah. And he said it's well deserved and if they need if they want to restore their credibility they need to do this that other that these other sorts of, of um, audits like the performance audit that the city auditor did right. which was pretty, I read that one. pretty rough uh, on heart and the project they're still just kind of cursory they don't go right. deep. And so apparently from the transcript it sounds like Colleen Hanabusa former uh, chairwoman of Hart and now U.S. Representative. She supported it. Mike Formby supported it. Uh, he's, there's apparently support on the city council for it. At least three members. Of the voices are they're getting louder. They are, and there's people in the. Let me. Um, so I think this is a perfect opportunity me, to do it, especially yeah, now. Yeah. And it could be done by the legislature. If Hart's not going to do it, they they eventually what what they eventually did when it came back around in June. They decided, well, never mind, let's don't do that yeah. after all. But the money's still in there. in there. Oh, then it set aside. $250,000 okay, is still in their budget. You, you mentioned the legislature, and you also mentioned, you know, the fact that there's just no credibility here with this project. Even the people who support it aren't believing what the costs are going to tr truly come out to be. Yeah. So finance chair Sylvia Luke said on March the 10th, said, it's not because people no longer support rail, but people have lost confidence in the cost, and they have lost confidence in what this project is going to cost in the future. Right. There it is right there. Right. Um, and those are the people she's referring to that actually support the right. project. Right, and, and as we go into the legislature, you know, theoretically, they're all for the rail, and, and at least that's the way the, some of the news articles have been framed, that the only issue for them at this moment is to consider how to raise taxes to fund rail, and that they couldn't agree, and that's why they had this stalemate. Um, but I'm not so sure they all really do support rail, and I'm not so sure, and I have a feeling that very few of them want to either extend the GET or impose a tax on the tourism industry or anything else that involves raising taxes. And they have a real good opportunity. If what's also happening right now tomorrow, the, the council is going to take another vote on whether to um, issue bonds, and I think there might be one more vote after that, but they want to float bonds, and they are pretty much saying that if they do, $350 million worth of bonds would cover them through January. So what the legislature could do, it would be a very good face-saving maneuver, I think, for them, and put, put everything on the table. They don't believe, it's like here, both money committee leaders do not agree on at least one thing so far. They don't believe any of the figures anymore from the city. That's from Luke. Luke says she doesn't trust the city budget. That's from the star advertising. There they don't is. trust the city figures yeah, anymore. So is. what they ought to do, I recommend, is have the state auditor work with an outside independent transportation expert auditor to, to do a forensic audit of rail between now and January. And the legislature could, that's what they could do when they convene in late August. Don't just put all the, everything else on the shelf and say, all right, you guys are covering yourself till January. We'll, look in t we'll conduct a forensic audit because there's a nexus. You know, the state GET, the state TOD planning, 
there's a lot of connection with Keep them. Keep moving things forward yeah, until this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, do your rail thing with your bond money that you're going to get. And then in January, we promise to take up this issue first thing. And once we get the results of this audit, right. that way they don't have to pass any taxes. They can all wait for the audit audit report. Well, FTA is looking for an answer, though. Well, and this, and what is at stake is probably another seven hundred fifty million because the the real project already got. Well, my so view much. on that is well, well at this point, <laughs> when you're talking ten billion dollars yeah. and possibly thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, who knows where it's where going to stop. end? Yeah. What is a mere Remaining seven hundred seventy million dollars. Yeah. You know? yeah. Good point. <laughs> I want to get at um, more of this this concept of the, of why your point, and I think it's a good one, that a forensic audit is 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 paramount. Uh, Randy Roth, who is been on Think Tech Hawaii and has opined on Civil Beat and the Star Advertiser, and you uh, you know he's done a great job. Great job. He actually was one of the parties that took uh, the rail project to federal court. Right. Um, he was on, um, on, on May 22nd, he was on Dr. Akina's show, and we're going to look at a quick clip on this, because he's using the term fraud. Yeah, fraud true. is a legal term. It's yeah. a very strong term. Yeah. Um, but you know what? He's a legal prof uh, a law professor. Yeah, retired. So you think he would probably know what that really meant yeah, before he said it. Can we take a look at say. that? Uh, well, I'm not an expert on transportation and transit and um, wouldn't normally spend nearly the kind of time and energy that I've put into to this project. But from my standpoint, um, what's gone on is, is a form of fraud. Um, wow. as, as best I can tell, from the very beginning, um, there's been more than just political spinning. Um, I think it was really clear at the beginning that this was going to cost far more than the $2.7 billion that they initially said. The, the 34-mile route would take. Then they increased it to 3, and then they increased it to 3.4, and then they increased it to 4.2, and et cetera. OK, well, that was Mr. Roth and opining that he isn't a transportation expert, but he recognizes how these costs kind of starting to grow, and, and the fact that he's using the, the term fraud um, would warrant maybe what other people think. Yeah, well, I think if you're talking about a fellow who, who uh, uncovered, you know, all the shenanigans at Bishop Estate, now Kamehameha Schools, uh, is saying this kind of thing. I, I'm taking it seriously, and I think that's giving impetus to the push for a forensic mm -hmm. audit. And, you know, he's not alone. There are, there's a, a, a growing number of people. And Grassroot Institute itself has a, has, a, has a push going called Audit the Rail. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a petition. You can go yeah. online and go audittherail.com, and you can sign it and add your voice to the, mm -hmm. to the crowd, to the choir. When I interviewed um, Representative uh, Bob McDermott, and he's a Republican representative from the EVA district area, and, uh, you know, I'd, he, was, he was one voice to say, look, Let's just go. Let's just get this thing done. Let's yeah. just push it through. Yeah. And, you know, I admired his editorial, and it was very succinct. It was very clear. And for politicians to be succinct and clear was really rare. So I wanted him to have on the show and, and, you know, discuss his points. And during the interview, I said, you know, um, there's just no credibility here. I mean, you want to push this thing through, and everyone wants to get this thing done. But how do you do that when people are saying, wait a minute, where, is there fraud here? Is there a, a case? of fraud, and why do we throw more money after, after something that really is not looking so well? And um, he acknowledged that, and uh, to my surprise, he said, I fully support a financial audit and a manage management audit, which, you know, almost, I didn't expect that from him, to be honest with you. Well, those are, those are okay, but it's got to go more than that. Yeah. So we have a clip of that, too, just, um, just on what he said. Um, let's look at what Mayor Kirk Caldwell said when he first pitched this idea okay. to the legislature in um, February 1st, 2017. He said, I think we're having a harder time than two years ago, and it's all based on the fact there's no trust. The numbers given have changed dramatically. Well, that's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> and history now has proven itself right, because we're now in, in June. And, um, well, I tell you what, I, I would support a uh, complete financial audit going back to the beginning of the, the project to, to this fiscal year. 
uh, I think that will go a long way to restore public trust. I think that's a great point. And I, I wanted to ask you about that. That's yeah, a great, great point. I, I think also you would need also a, uh, a management audit, too, because, as you know, they're two specific different things. But there is no public trust. And I think local people feel, because I'm married to a local girl, and I, so I live in that world, uh, somebody's making money on this. Somebody's getting rich. Somebody's pockets are being lined. And who, I think the voters who, are now who, who realizing that. Yeah, who is that? Who, who, who's making the money, bro? Yeah. There we have it. Uh, we have both Republicans and Democrats saying we have an issue here. And yeah. the groundswell is getting far more, much, much, much louder. So. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm somewhat disappointed that he's such a um, cheerleader for extending the general excise tax. A lot of Republicans aren't quite sure what to think about that because Hawaii already has such a high burden of, you know, cost of living. And that's another problem with the rail. It's, it's a very expensive top-down, size large, one-size-fits-all kind of thing. And it never did take into consideration cheaper alternatives and probably more effective alternatives. And the cost in money and land being taken from you know landowners families businesses yeah um the hassle the blood bank big the, issue <laughs> the hassles yeah, yeah the blood bank i mean it's it's yeah. a, it's terrible i think the social cost the financial cost and they're just they just want to keep it going i don't get it you know the question is as this debate about whether it's a tat or a, a, a get tax or it's property tax those discussions are probably taking place right now in the background and you know, the special session wasn't really supposed to be you know, be enacted unless they had an answer, and they're just coming to special session well, to vote on point. it, right? Yeah. Isn't there sunshine laws that uh, kind of oh. get at this? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we don't have time to go into that. I wish yeah. we did. Well, I think what they should do is get together and and just shove all that kind of talk and vote to to allocate money for a special audit in conjunction with the state auditor, hire mm -hmm. an outside firm, because I don't think the state auditor would really... How long do you think it would take to do an audit of that magnitude? Well, I think they could do it by January, but um, honestly, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But like you said, we things could still progress forward yeah. and until this has been resolved. I, I did so. talk about that with Randy Roth, as a yeah. matter of fact, and he, he agreed that this would be a really good face-saving maneuver gesture for the for these guys unless it went south <laughs> <For> this, <laughs> <like> <laughs> <the> <laughs> unless it didn't go well for them well <laughs> well you know you you don't know until you until you get it right right and, and um if we are all working in in the dark uh well that's no good uh, i'd like to yeah. see some light shine speaking of the sunshine yeah i'd like to see some sunshine uh, on, on on this the, particular on issue particulars yeah. here well mark we've run out of time and i i hope you'll come back again because we we didn't get all, all yeah, the questions so I wanted to ask talk you. About, yeah. <laughs> I got so much to talk like to you about. Like the alternatives to rail. What right, they, exactly. You know, so we didn't get a chance. Things, so yeah. please come back again. And I appreciate you coming on board and, and sharing your, your experience and your thoughts and thank your you. wisdom about this topic. Well, so nice thank to you very much. You. Nice to meet you as well. Great talking with you. Thank, thank you. you.